this week's breaking news, Marvel minifigures are out. We have a lot of rumors for a different series through 2024, and we have some potential new IPs. I'm calling out to you, Dune. So stay tuned for this week's breaking news. But first, I want to talk about a really cool store, a Brick Monarch Shop. This website is designed for all those AFLs out there that are looking for some great t-shirts with classic logos, some home decor you can put on your walls, such as shields, and some other great iconic aspects from the Lego history. You can head over to the link in our description for Brick Monarch Shop, and you can get a discount of 10% off using Back to Brick 10. That's Back to Brick 10, the number two, so head over there so you can get some really cool AFL swag. All right, now let's get to the breaking news. Let go. Let go. Let go. Let breaking news. Hey, everybody. Breaking Welcome news. back to Back to Brick. Breaking I'm your host, Garrett, news. and this is the podcast where we talk with fellow AFLs about their LEGO designs, and we get down to the breaking news every week to talk about all things LEGO has been up to for the past week. Not only that, but also in the LEGO community. So I'd highly recommend that you subscribe so every week you can get the latest news and listen and catch up instead of, well, reading all the news throughout the week. This is a very nice way to consolidate it all into one half hour time frame at the end of your week for that recap. So you can subscribe on any of your favorite podcast listening services. And if you want to really support the podcast, you can join our Patreon. You can join the Back to Brick Patreon and become a Lego stud or I guess it's a patron on Patreon. And I always like to thank my current patrons, Frank, Franco Portella, Dylan Evans, Jimmy Tucker, Ryan S., David, Cam Russell, and Derek Graff. I always want to send them out appreciation because they are supporting the podcast beyond anything that I could have expected to encourage me to continue to produce this and get their feedback as well as just engage with them on a closer level. There's, of course, different things that I send out, such as free Lego instructions from some of the builds I've done and, of course, um, getting involved with the podcast. So you can also come on the show if you're interested as well. But just a little bit of the admin, this week is Brick Fair, Virginia. So I will be at Brick Fair on Sunday from 10 to 4. If anyone is interested in meeting, I would love to meet you as well. I'm going to actually have a Back to Brick embroidered shirt that my sister and brother-in-law got me for my birthday. So you will you can see the, the big B logo on there and you can come say hello. And then we can interact, talk about, you know, of course, Lego, what we've seen around the convention. I'm very excited. This only happens once a year here and I wish I could go Saturday too, but we do have a birthday party that we'll have to, um, well, we have to attend. And I'm continuing to build onto some commission work that I've been working on, and it's taking time just because, well, it's a little bit, I'm not out of my comfort zone, but trying to create a human shape is always so technically intricate, and I'm I'm doing okay. Uh, I'll I'll eventually get it done. And always, I do offer if anyone wants to do have commissions done, I do do that. Just a, another plug for myself out there. And then I'm doing Lego idea submissions, and I keep well for the contest, and I keep saying that I'm not going to do them. And then I see one that just seems super interesting, and it pushes me to like, okay, I guess I got to do this. And there for the newest one that I'll talk about here in the news, but. Other than that, I am building onto, um, well, another project. We're doing our Tiki Bar. All the materials have finally come in, so tomorrow I will be starting on that. We did break ground, but now it's going to be moving onto the frame, the decking, and all that. Super excited and can't wait till it's built. I, I'm, in, I'm going to enjoy the process, though, because sometimes I don't do that. I just want the end goal. But this is going to be fun, non-stressful, and my wife is the project manager, so it'll go a lot smoother than if I were just to do it. And that's all I have for this week's admin. But we're going to talk, of course, about our set review at the end of the podcast. It's going to be set 71453, the newest theme, the dreams theme. And it's Izzy and Bunchu the Bunny. Very unique sets. And I can't wait to talk about this a little more and what I think about it. All right. I've talked enough. Oh, well, about that. Now I'll talk some more as we get into the breaking news. Officially revealed are the Marvel collectible minifigures. This is Series 2. The first one came out two years ago. And now we have a total of 12 new figures that you're all going to be super excited about getting. They're callbacks from all of our favorite TV shows that are either coming out or have already uh, come out. So we have uh, Hawkeye. We have the new X-Men 97 minifigures. So that's Wolverine and um, Storm. Or excuse me, and the Beast. We also have from Moon Knight, both Mr. Knight and Moon Knight himself. 
And we also have Storm, too. Sorry, I guess there were three total that I missed. That Agatha Harkness is really, uh, really cool, I think. The one with Wolverine I like because he actually has um, one of the heads of the robots that attack them. I always forget what they're called. Sent- Sentinels? I think they're Sentinels. I think that the minifigures themselves are just always unique, and having them two years, it seems like a long time, but it's a good callback to those specific ones that we're going to see here in the future. Um, and they, instead of using Kang, they used Goliath. And, uh, well, you got to do what you got to do, I guess. I'll be collecting all of them. The only problem is they're going to now be in the cardboard boxes. So I will throw out a suggestion. I heard that a good way of finding them now is using a scale, so like a kitchen scale. And you can kind of determine what the weights are for each of them. So if you find the same weight, it's probably the same figure because they do come with different parts. Honestly, most people are just going to rip into these boxes and they're going to be littered all over the place. Uh, so y- you do what you got to do to collect them all. Uh, honestly, that's the hard part about these new cardboard boxes. I understand that they're supposed to be climate consci- conscience, but they also have the plas- the paper bags that they've been putting in the Lego sets. So maybe they should switch back to that. I guess we'll see this as they've been doing that for the Marvel collectible builds and maybe they'll change it up in the future. Lego Star Wars has come out with a new set that I think everyone has really been looking forward to. This one was a rumored Coruscant Guard gunship. Now, the difference between this and any of the other gunships is this is just red. It's got a lot of red detailing to it, and it comes with the clone troopers in their red uniforms. It does come out on September 1st at $140. We are getting two unique figures. One is Palpatine and the other is Padme. And this is, I think, from the Clone Wars style uniform. And, well, if you love the gunship, you'll probably be getting this. I like it because it does base it on the Clone Wars TV show. And, well, it's red instead of the classic white that we always get. All right, we have some rumors for 2024. Now, this is the first, and there will be a few more later on throughout the episode. The first one is Star Wars to continue on, and we already have all the way up through May. So January, we're looking at the Clone and Droid Battle Pack, which hasn't happened for a very long time, and hopefully we get some unique coloring as well to those. The Skeleton Crew ship, um, if you watch the show Skeleton Crew, I guess it's a pretty important ship. And then a Crimson Firehawk, which is a four plus set. March, we're getting, these are my two favorites, I think, coming up. A MIDI scale Millennium Falcon and a MIDI scale Tantive 4. The MIDI scale is just phenomenal. I love it in the Super Star Destroyer. Hopefully they come out with maybe some of the sequel trilogy ones, some prequel things. Uh, those will be cool. So uh, look out for those. They're also doing the Tantive 4 boarding party diorama and then R2-D2 as a buildable figure, which this is, I think, like the 18th one for sure. May is Grogu's Escape and uh, Bo- Bo- Bonta Eve, Bunta Eve, wow, I can't, I, I know Star Wars, Bunta Eve pod race diorama which is awesome i love pod racing a droidica which is an 18 plus set and they did this in technic before we could roll it and it kind of expand that was such a cool feature and i love the droidica so uh, that'll be a cool addition and maybe they'll do some of the other ones as well and then there's a may the 4th ucs set at 240 dollars, which is the new standard instead of 200 dollars. now we all know well, we don't know what it is, but we're expecting the Sand, the Venatar class in the fall. And it looks like we're going to get a remake here of the TIE Interceptor. Now, we've seen the TIE Interceptor recently in The Mandalorian Season 3. So this is kind of lines up with that so that people understand and uh, know it instead of just a out of the blue one that we haven't seen in a while. I- I'm interested to see it. I didn't get the TIE Fighter before and I keep wanting to collect these but it just gets more and more expensive but i'm excited to see this next year and how lego and star wars will continue to um, well encourage us to buy as christmas is approaching because it's only august lego has revealed their two new sets for this coming christmas one is a nutcracker that actually has a little nutcracking feature to it and it's only 208 pieces 
Uh, it's okay. It's 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 different for sure. And then the other one is their ornament series, which they like to do. But this time, it's three different ornaments put together at 190 pieces. These are gingerbread men or women. Uh, I genderless. Let's go with that. And they have some the big eyes. You can put some icing on it to create the hair. And they're very simple. Uh, just something to add. They have their legs and arms are the two by four and two by six tiles. It's sure. It's all right. Um, I miss when they would do brick heads for the seasonal things. These probably won't cost too, too much. I'm guessing 20 to 15 to 20 dollars, and they're part of the holiday, so they'll be collectible in the end. So, if you ha- need to add more to your tree, this is something well up your alley. Well, also because it's Christmas time, it's advent calendar time. They already have released the three images of Lego City advent calendar. Lego Marvel Advent Calendar, and Lego Harry Potter Advent Calendar. Now, there's always a few more. I think there's Friends. They'll do... Um, what's what's another one? There's definitely another one they do. But the City one is a classic. There's, of course, just uh, um, some ice sculpting, which I think is pretty cool. Hockey, uh, turkey, the tree. They're just the classics. Nothing really that impressive about the City one. For the Marvel one, they're focusing on... Well, just everybody again. You've got Spider-Man, uh, and he actually is shooting a web at kind of a robotic, probably built by Tony Reindeer, Captain America. Uh, we also have what's her name from uh, the the guard in Black Panther. Dang, I can't remember. It does have Tony, and it does have some mini scale figures. But in general, there's nothing exciting about this. The only costume I see that's different is Spider-Man has a sweater, Christmas sweater. Uh, Marvel is a little bit disappointing as they probably could do a little bit more detail for him. Oh, and Star Wars is the one that we're waiting for. Star Wars is probably going to be excellent because I love the Star Wars ones. And then Harry Potter. Harry Potter has uh, some fun figures this time where they have Harry, Ron, and Hermione in their clothes that they wore when they were in Hogsmeade. Hermione has, it looks like a new hair piece with a cap on and her hair underneath. There's some uh, Hogwarts sign. There's some other characters that may know. And the chocolate frog and Birdie Bot's Every Favorite Beans. I like it. I think it's a good one to have. So I'll probably do Star Wars and Harry Potter this year instead of Star Wars and Marvel. But those will come out probably in September, October time frame before they'll probably sell out. And then you'll have to wait till they restock for your December building fun. With the newest expansion on 2K Drive, where they have the Creator Center, where you can share your different builds and engage with others in how you want to build, a lot of people are going to be making movie cars. And one of those is the Ecto-1 from Ghostbusters. People have gone about building it. They actually have YouTube channel videos for like how to build, which I think is pretty cool because then people still get the experience of building it. And it looks similar to exactly like the ones that were built Uh, You can build outside with instructions from Lego. But if you want, you can get the code for the Ecto-1. The code is E7NXAK. If you want the one from Afterlife, which I guess is a little bit older, it's the Y2LKSU. And then the Ecto-1 boat. Because, well, there's water adventures, of course. That's 9SN3S4. Enjoy. Have fun with those, and hopefully they'll come out with more. I'd love to see, like, a kit car and maybe Bond. The Lotus would be fun and have that as a water car. It's a fun ride. Lego and Disney are continuing to celebrate 100 years of Disney, the corporation. So as they continue to engage and build new Lego sets that we'll see probably for the next couple years, because I'd love to celebrate for longer than just the year, they're also coming out with some other media, as we've talked about on TV shows on YouTube. And now on Disney+, Plus, they'll be coming out with a new TV show, The Lego Disney Princess, The Castle Quest, which will debut on August 18th. The special includes Tiana, Moana, uh, Snow White, Rapunzel, and Ariel setting off on an adventure when they um, they are each unexpectedly transported to a mysterious castle. The princess characters work together to solve challenges hidden deep within the castle walls and try to save their kingdom. These are all non minifigure scale, but the friend scale and having the interaction and, and just the girl power to it is really fun. And I know a lot of people will probably enjoy it as well. Disney Plus has made such an impact for just coming up with a different creativity and Lego doing the same. 
because I th- is it yeah they've had some of the other ones like Star Wars on there all very cute and fun so as I said the last weekend I think it was two weekends ago at this point that we saw Barbenheimer so Barbie and Oppenheimer and now there's actually a fan theory that says well the Lego movie universe and the Barbie universe are the same it's not like a very in depth or deep theory here it's just that well lego and barbie are both toys and they're from both movies are produced by warner brothers but the biggest one is will ferrell will ferrell is the corporate boss for well barbie and then he's also the dad as somebody wearing a suit so um you could make the connection that he is the same boss as in barbie what's really funny though is that the director of the lego movie Chris Miller has said that, well, I completely support this. On his Twitter account, he even put a shared universe with the two pictures of them from Will Ferrell in the basement to Will Ferrell as the Barbie uh, headquarters CEO together. It's a fun interaction to have such big movies. Well, I thought both were really good in their own right. Kind of combined and Will Ferrell, of course, to be the connection or the craggle glue between both of them. With the celebration release of the Lego Dreams theme, which came out on August 1st, they're going to be doing a event for some kids when they come in the store. It's called the Lego Dreams PJ and Play Party, and it will be hosted on August 5th. Now, I'm not sure exactly which tours will have it, so you'll have to check with your local store. But the first 20 kids to show up at the specified time will receive a special gift. Now, it's expected that you probably have to wear your pajamas to go. I don't know if adults can say that they're kids and wear pajamas. It it would be fun to go and do that, but I don't think anyone would appreciate me walking a robe through the mall and into the Lego store. And maybe we'll see some other uh, fun things from this. I'm guessing it's going to be one of the smaller sets or a polybag style for the Dreams series. It is very unique in itself. So having kids engage like this and thinking about how they'll dream and dream of Lego is pretty cool. Lego Speed Champions is continuing to expand, of course, because it's just a very popular series. And we don't know specifically what cars will be coming out in the rumor, but there is a total of four now. Instead of, I usually think they do six to eight. So I'm wondering what they'll be. Maybe they'll have some more detail, but the bad part is that they're getting a price increase. The piece count is similar at 25 to um, 350. And then, of course, there's the larger ones with over 700 pieces. But the the pricing is just, I think, $30 now. And I think they used to be like 15 to 20. I, I think that they've captured the market because a lot of people like the sets. So they're like, oh, so now we can just continue to bump up the price a little bit at a time and make people still want to buy them. I haven't gotten any myself. I need to still get the DB5, but the I hate the price increases. I know a lot of people like the Speed Champion sets because they're cars that they've always dreamed of having or already have so they can place it as a mini model next to the real one. And we'll have to see if they're worth it this coming year and see how the series will pan out in the next year or so if the prices continue to go up. Some more rumors. Let's dive into Technic this time. And there's a wide range of Technic, as usually it is per year, and a lot of them are always construction and car-based. So some that that'll jump out are the John Deere Forage Harvester. So that'll be an interesting one. You can look that up online. Some other ones that I think are cool is they're doing some more space ones. So one is going to be the Surface Space Loader LT78, Planet Earth and Moon in Orbit. That could be awesome. Maybe we'll actually get some Technic gear style of the rotation and moving around. Wonder if it's going to be accurate to the actual phases of the moon here. The other big one that I'm interested to see is the Mars Crew Exploratory Exploration Rover. They've been uh, NASA has been coming out with it for a while, just kind of showcasing that is omnidirectional wheels and uh, a little pod on top. But we actually don't know what it is. There is a $220 set. Not sure. And it's an 18 plus set, but we don't know what it is. And that is not going to be the supercar one because they usually come out with that every two to three years. So expect that coming out in 2025. 
Next on the 2024 rumored list is City. Looks like we're going to get some more race cars, possibly go-karts as well. A monster truck, ambulance, and snowboard this time instead of uh, a snowmobile. I, and, uh, of course, the fire engine, fire helicopter, firefighter, police car, um, space mech, space asteroid recovery. That could be interesting. A space station. And the largest set of them all is going to be the space base with launch pad. And the city set does its standard level of having fire police ambulance and now space i wonder if they'll i mean they do sometimes they do road construction and i mean and that's another one's construction i wonder if they'll ever find a new set theme to do for a city hmm. there might be one already and i just don't know it but that'll be well a standard review for city sets come next year Lego creator sets are great because they're kind of a midway between having the icon sets and then having uh, the younger age aspect and, of course, the three-in-ones. And there's some that are coming out that are pretty cool. We're going to get some roller skates, a watering can with flour, a astronaut in space, which is kind of a big hit against the astronaut that one of my friends... Um, has posted on Lego Ideas twice and got 10,000 votes and he won't likely won't get it which it sucks but it and it just means that you can either keep trying or now give the instructions to everybody or sell them so that you can have uh have other people appreciate it as well and these sets are not super expensive we're looking at 50 to 60 dollars for that top one and then on down a retro camera is part of it i'm not sure if that's going to be a same just a digital style camera or a polaroid because they are working on that as a lego ideas build and i'm excited for that so that's it for creator for next year hopefully there will be some great three-in-one style to it there are three collectible minifigure series expected out next year and they usually just create those creative different styles. We're going to get someone with probably a dinosaur or animal style, um, full body thing. This last series was pretty great because they had the Christmas style and they also had like a turkey and the boat, which I think was one of the most popular. So that'll be one series. But the second series that lineup is rumored to be only space. So are we going to see aliens? Are we going to see different um, styles of astronauts? Are we going to see like a technicolored minifigure of a classic spaceman? Of course, they want everybody to collect those. The last time they did come out with a spaceman with the space baby, which is, it was pretty cute and definitely something that a lot of space people and, well, collecting all those different colors of the classic spacemen and women are, are pretty fun. I'm excited to see those. And then the third one, we're not, uh, I'm not 100% sure either. Hopefully, we'll get uh, a unique style to that one, not just an, another series overall. It'd be cool to see, well, I don't know, Star Wars, Lord of the Rings, Indiana Jones, uh, Marvel again. So many, so many opportunities. And we have our next round of Lego icons. Now, the icon series also includes the botanical series and, of course, the larger scale um, modular styles and cars and all different other things. But it looks like we're only getting about four next year. And it's not I'm not sure, well, what they're going to be. But the price range isn't that bad. The top one is $80 and the rest are uh, down to 50 And the plants usually or the, hort the botanical style usually comes in that range so i'm i'm guessing another style of bouquet or a bouquet excuse me wow i can't talk today and then uh likely some other style of plant uh, I, i'm not sure i mean there's so many options there's thousands of plants out there wonder if they'll ever do like the flesh smelling plant which I, I think was always pretty interesting maybe they'll do another orchid because there's so many different styles for all different things and then that's just the smaller ones i'm i'm expecting we'll see of course a modular one come out january 1st because that's what they usually do and then some cars and different things here and there spread out okay this one i'm super excited for there's a new IP that looks like Lego is going to jump into and it might just be a one-off and that's 100% fine with me Lego Dune. 
they're going to do the Ornithropter. Now, if you haven't seen the movie, it's this helicopter that looks like a, a hummingbird. And so it has six wings that flap all uh, together, and it's super cool. And they'll come with a couple minifigures as well. Looks to be about $150. So we'll probably get some uh, $150 to $200 probably. This is all just based on rumor and depending on the size, but could be minifigure scale. I know I bought a instruction set from somebody who's already decided an ornithro- ornithropter, and it's difficult with the, the cabin, and so they must come up with some really cool either stickers to help with that or new brick molds. I just love the Horizon Zero Dawn set, so this is another one that they'll do. I don't know if Dune will have too many to follow up on, but the uh, Horizon they need to keep going with because there's so many different creatures that they could build into that. Super interested to see when come out and what it'll look like. But with Dune Part 2 on the way, possibly, depending on the strikes and different things, it could be a fun build while you're watching Dune 1 in preparation. All right, last bit on rumors for 2024 with sets and themes. But this one, uh, there is no theme. This is a brand new theme. We have no idea what it's going to be. There's uh, there's no real rumors around what it can be yet. Just some price ranging from fifteen up to uh, eighty dollars. Uh, could it just be an adaption of an old one? I'd love if they did like a retro redo of some other ones. And they're still celebrating, so the theme could just be a hey, so many people are interested in the classic sets, so let's bring them back as a full theme. Or we could just see a continuation and they just haven't named it yet, such as uh, Indiana Jones or any of the other movie series that they've been working through. guess we'll have to stay tuned and find out, and maybe it'll be something good. So it seems Lego is stepping into the golf realm now. Now, there hasn't been, I don't think, any golf sets, but I think they've done a golf minifigure. But there's a professional golfer that likes to test out different putters just to see if it might change change up his game. On the Corn Ferry Tour, Mitchell Maishner, he's a 27-year-old pro, decided he's going to try out some different putters. One that he always uses, but he likes to just test everything, is the Odyssey White Hot OG7 Bird. That's for anyone that is into golf. I don't know if that's a good one or a bad one or just weird, but they've created a Lego one now. Now the Lego one has some wheels on it with a minifigure kind of guiding as the guidance for the ball. And it was just fun. There's a a video on Twitter that shows it and you can see him testing out this putter as a bunch of others too. One putter is like three or two feet long. Um, but having Lego kind of be introduced into that set, and I think he shows off a Lego set as well, is just fun and a new way of inviting play, even on the golf course. And you can check out the video I've posted in the description. It is cool. He does talk about how it's got smooth and a smooth but soft face, and the wheels might not be PGA approved. With the latest release of the Mars rover set Technic, it has to be, of course, built by those that worked on the real thing at JPL or the Jet Propulsion Laboratory. So, of course, someone who worked there and on the real one decided that they had to buy the set. And he said it was a thrill as I was going through the set. My kids hear me just sort of wowing, you know, thinking, wow, every few pages of the instruction booklet that this piece or that piece was managed to be included or incorporated from the original vehicle. And Perseverance is a really cool rover that actually includes a mini helicopter. And the set did come out in a Lego Idea set a long time ago. And I unfortunately never purchased it, which I wish I would have. But now having this be an option, Technic set, is it's pretty fun to continue to experience the enjoyment of NASA and space. And our last bit of breaking news for today is a, it's something that just came out, actually, is the Lego Concorde. Now, this set is set 10318. The Concorde will cost $200 and be released on September 4th. This has a long history of just being an iconic piece of aviation history. It was the first uh, commercial aircraft that could go over two, Mach 2, which is two times the sound of the speed of sound, in which you could travel from New York to London in, I think, three hours, and it usually takes about seven. So that's that's pretty quick. The only problem is during uh, its long history from the 1970s, uh, 60s and 70s, well, it had two crashes, which led to the cancellation of building just based on safety. The set itself looks amazing. It's got a beautiful stand that holds it up. You can actually either have it in the landing position or in the full 
uh, flying position with wheels and, of course, the dip nose. Uh, for anyone who doesn't know, the nose is super long and they couldn't see when they were landing, so they had to, to dip it down. It does have a full interior styling to it, so you can see some of the seating as well as some of the other mechanical sides. I'm pretty sure you can flip up the wheels. Beautiful set. Can't wait to get it. A piece of aviation history. They do have it in museums all the time, so you can go check those out. Well, and that's it. That's all the breaking news this week. Thank you so much for everybody who's tuned in to listen to me well, talk on and on about Lego. I can't wait to continue the discussion next week. And make sure to subscribe to the podcast. Please, if you want to support, go on to our Patreon, which the link is in the description, and come and just be a part of the Lego Stud group. Now I'll move into, as I always do, our set review. This one's set 71453. The Lego Dream Series, Izzy and Bunchu the Bunny. Now it is a seven year plus set, 259 pieces and 130 VIP points. It does have a review actually, one review at a five star. The set itself only costs $20, which I think is a pretty good deal, especially for the design of it. Now it comes with this large robotic bunny and it comes with a girl with a sword and then the newer characters i actually don't know what they're called they almost look like teddy bear style but they have the heads used on the babies that we've seen uh, lego be used for the past four years i think now now the bunny itself is in a almost bright blue styling and the front does have this curved face piece that is printed which is nice because i mean stickers suck and then it has um, two different adaptions they can do because you can dream up different styles for it. And one is you can put on roller skates that have flames coming out of the back. And then another, you can put those flames on its back itself and have wings to fly. The character uh, actually has this really cool molded hair piece that she has this um, kind of same lighter blue turquoisey hair mixed in with a pinkish purple hair. My wife and I actually got to see this printed at the Lego factory, and that is, that's pretty cool. I wish we would have got one of those while we were there, but I guess I'm just going to spend 20 bucks to get this set. It's a set with a th- two ways of fun, as I said, with the roller skates and the wings, so you can design it any way you want. And it's just the beginning stage, I think, to your entry into the Dream series. And I don't know if you've watched, there's the Dreams TV show, and it's probably been featured in that as well. And at $20, I think it's a great point to start at. The The bunny itself has some very uh, good motion within the arms and legs, so you can adjust it. It has the newer pieces for the legs that are um, kind of the bent, uh, almost, I'd say, like, worm-like or caterpillar-like pieces. And then the color scheme is also just really fun it gives you the sense of somebody dream this up and on the chest it does have a little ticking time clock so i'm guessing that's the time you have left in your time dreaming all in all i love the set i like the new series i'm not sure if i'll get much of it but in general they did a wonderful job being creative and having a new series like this with lego being creative is just part of the foundation all right That's it. That's all I have for this week's review and our bricking news. And if you're going to Brick Fair this weekend, come stop by and say hello. I'll have my shirt on with the Back to Brick logo on it. And it'd be fun to just hear what your thoughts are on the podcast. And let's talk about Lego. So I'll leave you as I always do. Get creative, get out there, and go build something.